Great. So thanks for joining us today, uh, Stephen, head of the Queen's Speech. Obviously, as part of the SNP, there's a, there's a few newbies come down to Westminster. And I just wondered if you could give me a bit of uh, behind the scenes, what yeah. your experience has been like so far. I know it's been very short. Sure, but... yeah. Um, well, there are a lot of newbies. I don't think there have ever been quite yeah. so many newbies. Proportionately, we went from six to 56. Yeah. So 50 newbies, well, 49 really, um, not counting Alex Salmond. Um, the first thing I have to say is staff at Westminster couldn't have made us feel more welcome. Um, there have been a few of us have got lost a couple of times on, on, on the way around. But I think we're, we're, we're really trying to get into the swing of things because we're so keen just to get in and get started. So um, it's been good. Staff made feel, us feel really welcome. They're working hard. Although at the moment, I've still got somewhere to hang my sword, but I don't have a desk yet. Ah, right. Yeah. And uh, on that, there's, there's been a, I've seen there's been a bit of fun of game, shall we call it? Uh -huh. In particular with Dennis Skinner, the veteran Labour yeah. MP, and people apparently trying to take it. Is there going to be more of that? No, I, I think no? people are picking up the wrong end of the stick on this one. All the, the SNP is the third biggest party in Parliament. All we're trying to do is to um, sit in the seats that were always occupied by the third party in Parliament, as the Liberal Democrats did before they joined up with the Tories in 2010. Um, and we've said, well, look, let's have a compromise. So. Dennis Skinner and the father of house Gerald Kaufman are very, very welcome to, to stick with us on those, on those benches. So we're, we're keen to see a compromise, but we really just want to get stuck into the business of holding the government to account at Westminster. And talking about holding the government to account, yeah. we've got the Queen's speech yep. um, coming up, of course. Um, what's the main sort of opposition there from the SNP? I presume it's going to be the anti-austerity stuff. Yeah. Without Labour, um, together we thought before before the election mm -hmm. it's going to be you two guys would make up effectively a left-wing block mm -hmm. and whatever so how are you guys going to tackle those uh, that so-called austerity agenda well look i think first things first austerity is really important first things first on the parliamentary arithmetic i think the conservatives have got to remember that they they may have achieved a majority down, down in England, but they have no, you know, they didn't achieve any sort of mandate in Scotland. They had their worst um, results since 1865. So I think the Conservative Party need to think about um, working with us and look, 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 and, and, and looking at areas where we, we, we should have a little bit of, of influence. I'd like to see something more akin to the, the Holyrood model at Westminster. Let's not forget the Tories got there with 37% of the vote, about one in four people who could vote voted for them. Um, I think all parties in the chamber need to try and reach out and work together. And, and on that area, we're looking at the austerity agenda, which is damaging to the economy and damaging to some of the most vulnerable in our society. Also, the Human Rights Act. I mean, scrapping our connection with the European Convention on Human Rights, obviously nothing to do with the European Union, is a retrograde step. That's a basic level of human rights, and we should be trying to defend that. Also, in Europe, um, if there is to be a European referendum, we are, we're against this idea of disenfranchising um, people from, from, from EU countries and people live and work and are committed to here, they should have a say. And similarly, we'd love to see 16 and 17 year olds get the vote. That was a great thing that happened in Scotland mm. and 16 and 17 year olds really enriched the debate. I wanted to pick up on the, on the 16 year old point. Obviously, it's the general election sure you guys get 56 MPs, obviously very good. Yeah. Why do you want to change that franchise for the referendum? Well, in the Scottish independence referendum, we had what was a fantastic debate. Whether people voted yes or they voted no, people engaged in the debate and really got involved. And the SNP was in favour of having that franchise to be as wide as possible because we wanted people to engage in the future of their country. And we had an, a positive campaign and um, an 86% turnout, and that was a good thing. And one of the particularly good things about that was the way that 16 and 17 year olds really got engaged in the debate. Similarly, in the way that um, people from other European countries who live and work and are committed to Scotland also got involved in that debate as well. Mm. We're now in the ridiculous situation where one of the SNP MSPs, a guy called Christian Allard, who's a French national, mm. um, can be a member of the Scottish Parliament but can't vote in the European referendum. So let's make it a nice wide franchise and let's have a positive debate. I think mm. that would be the right way forward. On the second point there, because yeah. we've talked about young people, now we've yeah. moved on to the EU citizens. Yeah. I just wanted to ask, isn't this a question for British citizens and subjects rather than EU nationals living here? Isn't that the fairest way to, for them to have, let's say, British? Well, the UK government saying that if you're Irish, if you're Maltese or if you're Cypriot, you have a vote, but if you're French or if you're Dutch or if you're German, you don't have a vote. 
So that strikes me as being um, really unfair. And also, I, I want to labour this point about 16 or 17 year olds. Remember that um, they'll have to live with the consequences of our decision for a lot longer than, than most people. So it's really about the future and the kind of future we want to build. So let's get the 16 year olds in and give them a vote. It worked in the Scottish referendum very effectively. And I think it'll work for this one as well. And finally, mm. I just wanted to bring this back to the sort of personal. Yeah. And I just wondered what particular goals do you have for yourself? Obviously, with just the parliament's you know, going to yeah. kick off proper now. Yeah. Um, what sort of ambitions or things that you hope to achieve? Sure. I think for me, well, I've, I've just been appointed as shadow minister on Europe. So a big part of my job will be um, setting out a positive case for Europe. It's about keeping Scotland in the European Union, but um, it's also about where there are areas for positive change. So, for instance, should we be working more closely together on, on security, such as migration crisis in the Mediterranean? That's a big priority right now. Um, climate change, should we be working closer together with European partners on climate change or on social issues as well, as well as the other areas where you need reform, such as fisheries and other such such areas. So I want to focus on that and that's obviously a big priority. I also want to do things, I mean my, my first and foremost priority is obviously to my constituency. So um, I want to be the best constituency MP to everybody in North East Fife regardless of how, how they voted um, and that means promoting small businesses, um, universities, excellence of our universities, fantastic re um, resource at St Andrews University, promoting our food and drink industry as well which is, is, is going from strength to strength. So these are all areas that I want to promote over the next little while as Member for Parliament for North East Fife. Fantastic. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.